for us. Listening to that was Christine Murray, Editor-in-Chief of The Developer UK. That's an independent publication about the architecture and design of cities. Christine, good afternoon to you. Good afternoon. Um, I noticed on your Twitter feed this morning, it's why I invited you on, um, uh, you know, you you knew at the time the stadium was being built down by Olympic Park, for example, that uh, you and many others knew that it was being built on a floodplain and and, and they did it anyway. Is, Is that the long and the short of it for you? Uh, well, for me, it was a known problem. The Olympic Park did actually quite a lot of things, um, such as raising some of the venues up high, Westfield, Stratford. A uh, shopping centre is raised quite high. Anyone who's visited knows that there's a lot of stairs that you climb in order to get into it. Mm-hmm. But as uh, I watched the surrounding areas being developed, including a lot of housing in Hackney Wick and housing in Newham, it was obvious they were not being raised above uh, the known flood risk area. They were being developed kind of on the level that they've always been, the historic level, and that that was um, a severe flood risk. So what is there more in terms of design that could have been done and can still be done for people living in that area? I think paved areas uh, and this idea that you know our entire drainage system is based on a different kind of rain than we're going to experience increasingly going forward. London rain tends to be a light kind of rain and climate change brings much heavier rain, much more sudden rainfall, which the drainage systems just don't have the ability to cope with. Uh, and then you get flooding, as you did around Hatney Wick, which is it completely expe- expected. It's a, a London, uh, you know, flood risk zone. It's the highest kind of um, risky area. But this is going to be an increasing problem across London and other areas as well. And it's interesting because a good 15 years ago now, when I lived in West London, relatively close to the centre of town, um, and, and again, this it's not just a London issue. This this can this is you know if you have the Cumbrian situation, you've had other areas of the south of England as well. Um, it, but you know, so we're talking fifteen years ago. The exact same thing happened, and people with basements, uh, either basement shops, store for storage, or basement flats, and it was you know it took half an hour for them to be completely flooded out, and that, that was down to drains and rain. Yes, and I, I think again, it's a problem that's going to be. Hattonywick was not an area that was typically so heavily residential. It was, you know, mostly factories, a lot of artist studios. There were people always living there, uh, and they were at a flood risk. But it's been built up quite a lot more lately. And as you can see in the planning documents, it was denied as a place to develop housing initially. And then it was agreed that there was a great housing need and that to reach the target that housing would be built there. However, the Environment Agency did say that there should be no basement flats and no ground floor flats and that we should expect all the ground floor flats to regularly flood. I mean, it feels very unacceptable to the people who have have actually gone to live there uh, and I don't know how aware they were uh, that they, this housing was created knowingly uh, that they would not be able to access their ground floors when flooding occurred. So the prescription for this is what? Uh, better drainage system as in underground piping drainage so that water isn't just pouring out of the drains into the streets and and also you know we, we are we are paving over an awful lot of our front gardens for cars that kind of thing aren't we? Certainly, there shouldn't be paving over of, of front gardens and, you know, back gardens. We do need to have more sustainable, sorry, there's a bit of car moving time, um, sustainable drainage systems, which means planting that can absorb the water, slow down its flow. So when you have a sudden rain shower, it's not rushing the ground. The, drain. Can, the ground it's, takes it, yes, yeah. That's it. So this idea of moving to a more sponge city than a drainage city. But I would also argue for that there is an argument for climate justice here. I mean, these properties were developed and they were sold to people and rented to people. So there is the accountability mm, for that. Mm. Um, and as we see, you know, that happening across one in 10 new homes across the country, across all of England, are built in high risk flood areas. So I would like to see some climate justice there and some accountability for decisions that were knowingly made to create homes in high flood risk areas. Thank you, Christine. Let's talk again sometime. Really fascinating. Thanks a lot, Christine Murray, Editor-in-Chief of The Developer UK. This is as-